where we are just learning that Israel says it's attacked 130 Hamas targets with dozens of planes over the course of the last three hours as a devastatingly bloody war has erupted. The Israeli defense minister says he's given the order to begin a, quote, complete siege three days after Hamas launched an attack by land, air and sea. Major blasts rocked Gaza just minutes ago. Israeli airstrikes raining down on the Palestinian enclave. This days after the coordinated attack by Hamas. Israel says Islamist militants killed 700 people. The Israeli response to this weekend's attack also coming on the ground. Heavy armor and troops have been moving south. But any ground offensive will be complicated by Hamas and its allies holding hostages. The Islamist militants in Gaza claim to be holding more than 100 captives. And that's on top of Palestinian civilians on the ground who will likely be caught up in any fighting. Palestinian officials say more than 500 people have already been killed in Israeli strikes. All this as rocket fire from Gaza continues. Many of the rockets have been intercepted, but some have landed in Israeli territory. You can see the damage here where charred vehicles litter this street in southern Israel. And it's not just the south. There are growing concerns Lebanese militant group Hezbollah will enter the conflict and threaten Israel's northern frontier. Israel says it's already killed armed suspects who entered from the Lebanese side. And it says its helicopters are striking inside Lebanese territory. UN forces have reported explosions near a town on the Lebanese side of the border. For the latest, CNN's Becky Anderson is live in Tel Aviv, Israel. Uh, Becky, uh, how have things been unfolding? You and I last spoke around 5 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, quite a lot has happened since. Yeah, this is central Israel. I've got line of sight um, down the road uh, towards Gaza from here, about 50 miles, and I've got line of sight towards uh, northern um, northern Israel here, the Lebanese border. And we are in central um, Israel, as I said, in Tel Aviv, where we have... Uh, continued to hear all day the kind of low-level rumblings, booms, the Iron Dome intercepting um, incoming uh, rockets from Gaza fired by Hamas towards uh, Tel Aviv and Ben Gurion Airport. We've got some uh, evidence uh, this morning when an engineer was coming in um, that uh, there was an explosion uh, just south of the airport here. Everybody hit the deck there. And so, you know, the intensity of this, I think, is... It is, it is really the, the story of the hour, you know, and the fact that we have Gaza in play, Tel Aviv and Jerusalem um, hearing sirens uh, because there are incoming um, attacks or incoming rockets uh, from Hamas, and then to, to the north here, the potential uh, for um, something significant happening on the Lebanese-Israeli border. It, it is a ratcheting up, there is no doubt, in what is this very bloody conflict, uh, Casey. All right, Becky Anderson in Tel Aviv. Uh, stay safe, Becky. We will be coming back with you much more throughout this hour. But joining us now from Jerusalem is CNN's Ben Wiedemann. Uh, ben, uh, Jerusalem, of course, one of the places where these sirens have been heard. What's the latest there? Yeah, Casey, about an hour and a half ago, we heard the sirens go off and then some distant thuds. We understand there may have been as many as 10 intercepts. And there are reports coming from the Israeli Medical Service that several people were injured on the outskirts of Jerusalem. It's not clear if that was an impact or, as I've seen myself before, when the Iron Dome intercepts uh, incoming missiles, there's a lot of shrapnel that falls to the ground. So that may have been uh, the cause uh, for those injuries as this conflict uh, intensifies. Uh, what we have heard so far today, for instance, uh, Yoav Gallant, the Israeli defense minister, has ordered what he called a complete siege on Gaza, cutting off all food, electricity, and fuel uh, to a place where two million people are living. Now, according to the World Food Program, 63% of the population of Gaza is, quote, food 
insecure. The Israelis are, of course, preparing by all accounts for a massive ground incursion, invasion uh, into Gaza, sending lots of armor in that direction. Now, it's not clear how far they're going to go, but certainly in 2008, 2009, when there was a prolonged outbreak of violence between Gaza and uh, Israel, the Israelis did cut the Gaza Strip in half, but they avoided going into population centers. In 2014, Israeli forces entered the Gaza Strip, but yet again avoided going into population centers. Now, the expectation is this time, given the gravity of the situation, the Israeli operation in Gaza will, will, will be much more extensive. Uh, it may take time for that to happen, but of course, what we're seeing is that there are, according to the Israelis today so far, 130 strikes in Gaza, they say, on Hamas targets. But what we've seen uh, is that uh, they seem to be have done away with what's known as the knock on the roof, where a small explosion is or explosive device is directed at the building they plan on hitting as sort of a warning shot for people to leave. Sometimes the Israelis will actually call people in the building and tell them to evacuate. It doesn't seem to be happening at the moment in Jabalia in the northern uh, part in the Jabalia refugee camp in northern Gaza. Uh, there was a strike earlier today. The extent of damage from the video we're seeing, videos we're seeing, is massive. Uh, there's talk of as many as 50 people being killed in that strike alone. And I think the expectation people in Gaza, of Gaza, is that this is just the beginning of what's going to be a very long and difficult period. Ben Wiedemann in Jerusalem. Thank you very much for that. We're going to dive into all of this now with today's panel. Natan Sachs is the director of the Brookings Institution Center for Middle East Policy. Vivian Salama, a national security reporter for The Wall Street Journal. And David Sanger is CNN's political and national security analyst. He also serves as a White House and national security correspondent at The New York Times. And David, let me start with you um, because you have covered uh, this your whole career, essentially, and can help us understand. Uh, ben was walking us through some of what may happen uh, in the Gaza Strip in the coming days. Uh, really unprecedented. It is, and it poses a whole series of dilemmas for uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu, his government, for President Biden, as he tries to support uh, the Israelis. So the first dilemma is, what do you do about the hostages? There are, as you said, more than 100. We've been reporting at the Times, the number may be closer to 150. Clearly, some of those are also American citizens, although we don't know uh, how many. Uh, but in any case, uh, hostages for any society is a big deal. And for Israel, as you know, it's going to be a huge uh, issue. So they've got competing instincts here. One is to go in to clear out Hamas, and the second is saving the lives of those hostages, and the hostages presumably are in tunnels or in the middle of Gaza. The second problem is, it's one thing to go into Gaza, which uh, we have seen happen before, though not in a long time. It's another thing to stay in Gaza, right? And this is the same problem the United States faced when it went into Afghanistan, uh, when it in, went into Iraq, because at some point, if you become an occupying force, you just get a constant guerrilla war. So the Israeli government's gonna to have to make a decision about how far does it wanna go. And the third issue, and you're seeing it right in these pictures here, is gonna be one of proportionality, right? It's been tragic for the Israelis. We think there are about 700 dead. You could see numbers that went way above that fairly quickly if the Israelis sustain this kind of a campaign. And many Palestinians uh, living in Gaza are not fans of Hamas. Natan, this is a region uh, you spend all of your time focused on. You obviously have uh, deep ties to Israel itself. I mean, just talk about what David kind of laid out there and what you see being the next turn in Gaza. Well, what's interesting, not interesting, tragic about this case is that it's not just another round. This is not just another repeat of previous times. In Israeli psyche, this is you know, to a large degree, Israel's 9-11. What happened on Saturday was so barbaric and so ostentatious in Israeli minds, and we haven't even seen all the pictures yet, that the mood in Israel is very different than it's been in the past. David spoke very well about the price that Israel would pay if it went in, and especially if it stayed there. 
But Israel is now willing to take prices, to take costs, and to yeah. also, uh, you know, take prices also from the Gazans, unfortunately, that it wasn't in the past. And so we could definitely see a massive invasion. We might also see even an attempt to uh, take down Hamas, which is something Israel has never done. Since Hamas took over the Gaza Strip, uh, bringing, taking Fatah out and taking over the Gaza Strip, we've seen Israel live with Hamas, of course an enemy, but at least an address they can deal with. Now, th a lot of things have changed in Israel. I don't know if the government will decide to topple Hamas. It is not out of the question. It was in previous rounds. It's not today. And Vivian, uh, your, your paper has been reporting uh, some of the origins of this. We obviously uh, haven't quite jumped into the conversation about Iran yet at this table, uh, but it certainly seems as though uh, sources that are speaking to the journal, they say, from Hamas and Hezbollah, uh, are saying that, hey, Iran was deeply involved in this. That's right. My, a number of my colleagues in the Middle East reported that um, Iran had basically cooked up a plan with uh, leaders in Hamas and Hezbollah as well, uh, trying to find a way to essentially execute this plan. Um, the administration here in Washington denies that. They say they haven't actually seen any direct evidence of um, direct involvement with by Iran in this particular case, but they say there's no doubt that Iran over the past few years has been arming, equipping, funding, advising Hamas fighters. And so, you know, whether or not they were directly involved, it remains to be seen. The U.S. doesn't have that intel yet, right. which then raises the, the question again of the intelligence, what America knew, what Israel knew.